People have a choice to resist or to repent. People have a choice to resist or to repent. People have a job or a choice to either resist, resist the God, or to repent. God speaks to us in many ways. He speaks to us through his word. Sometimes he uses people to speak to you. Sometimes he'll speak to you through a dream. Sometimes he'll speak to you through prayer. Sometimes he'll, he, he has a lot of ways of speaking. Sometimes God will use the, the elements of the, 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 the surroundings to speak to you. Yeah, have you ever found yourself sometimes doing something and, and, and all of a sudden you'll just be looking at the trees or looking at something and God would and he would just motion something and the elements around you and it will speak to you. And I know it looks foolish to some people because number one, the, the, the unregenerate can't understand the things of God. That's number one. And number two, it looks foolish to them because number one, they don't have the Holy Spirit. But when you have the Holy Spirit, sometimes the Bible says, I can use the foolish things to confound the wise. So sometimes God will use certain things that look foolish to other people, but it's God's divine revelation that's getting your attention. God speaks in many ways. He can speak to us through message teaching, a song, a testimony, a friend, a circumstance, or an inner conviction, or even the conscience. That's why he said in Romans uh, chapter 2, 15, he said the law of God is written well on their heart. In other words, we all have a conscience to either excuse or to other uh, self. And we either have a conscience to do right or to do wrong. Come on, somebody. God has built in us the innate the ability to decide on what we do, how we do, and when we do it, and when we decide that we want to do it. So at the end of the day, we are, as Romans chapter 1, Said, we are without excuse. Amen. Romans 119 says this. Romans 119 says this. And I'll read it from my ESV version. 119 says, For what can be known about God is plain to them, because God has shown it to them. For his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and his divine nature, have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world in the things that have been made so that they are without what excuse. For although they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks to him, but they became fruitile, empty in their thinking, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Claiming to be wise, they became what? Fools. Amen. Let's keep reading. And in exchange for the glory of the immortal God, for the images resembling mortal man and birds of the animal and creepy things, therefore God gave them up in the lust of their hearts to impurity, to the dishonoring of their bodies among themselves, because they exchanged the truth of God for a lie, and worship and serve the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. Mm, mm, mm. The Bible says he gave them up. They exchange the truth. It's a, it's a new colloquialism they use nowadays. My truth and your truth. Let me, let me, let me debunk that whole idea. There ain't no such thing as my truth and your truth. It's the truth. The truth is absolute. It stands alone. The truth, don't, number one, they don't need me to agree with it. They don't need nobody to agree with it. They don't need a board, a board of approvals or advisors to agree with the truth. The truth is just what it is. It's the truth. If you put ice in the glass, the water sooner or later, or the liquid you drink it will get cold. It don't need nobody to approve of it. It don't need no scientists to sound on it. It don't need Dr. Kim there to examine it. No, it's just the truth. It's not a fact, it's true. Why? Because it's been tried, it's been proven. It's true. The air we breathe, amen, call somebody, it's true. How do you know it? Ah, well, I'm breathing it, I'm experiencing it. It's true. The word of God is true. It don't need nobody to say, well, you know, you know. No, 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 no. It's the truth. The Bible says, who they unrighteousness suppress. The enemy always wants to suppress the truth. The truth about what? Anything. 
That's why he was doing the Daniel chapter one, the brainwashing effect. You remember the story of Daniel uh, chapter one when uh, the, 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 the boy, the, the men of, of God was there, and, and Daniel they was trying to get Daniel to, to eat the, the king delicacies and the king's food, and they were trying to train him up in the house, amen, and, and show him the ways of what they wanted to teach him. And then the, the Bible said, and he wanted to educate him to a point too, because the enemy, that's what he wants to do. The enemy wants to re-educate you. The enemy think you foolish. Why? Because you follow, you follow the God you can't see. Or some people will say, or oh, you follow some blue-eyed man or some white man on the Bible or some white man God. Let me debunk the whole idea again. There's no such thing as a white man God. Because number one, God is not white and he's not blue eyed I don't read it up. I don't study it up. And if you read it, study it up too, then you will come to find out that he's not a white God. He's a God of all people, of all nations. Even though people in the past, in some degree in the present, still try to paint images of who Christ was or how he looked. Amen. Number one, if you read, again, if you read and study the Bible long enough, you will understand the culture. If you want to understand the culture of people, and that's why the Apocrypha is a good book to buy. And even though it, it was books that was taken out of the Bible for their own purposes, yet it still is in the Bible bookstore. And if you go and look into the Apocrypha, you will see that it talked extensively to the historical fact and to how the people look in the children of Israel. So if you really want to see the depth of the Hebrew people and how they look, and the Bible even said that there was a mixed multitude of people. Matter of fact, when Joseph died, the Bible said that when the funeral procession was going, they said the Egyptians to some degree had looked like the Israelites. So we know that number one, Jesus could not have been just of a Pacific color because if he was a Pacific color, then they would have been able to point him out. That's why they took, they took Judas, the kids Jesus, to point him out. Because if he looked at life sometimes the way certain aspects of the world would try to play the color or play the uh, image of Jesus, then everybody would have knew who Jesus was. So that's why it took Judas to point him out. Yeah. Read your Bible. Yeah. The Bible says for the men of God suppress the truth. The enemy always wants to suppress the truth. And sometimes he'll try to take you through a brainwashing conditioning try to change your thought pattern how you think how you rationalize how you process that's what the enemy wants to do and that's why he'll try to tear out everything in the scriptures and tear the scriptures apart because he wants to try to change the complexity and how you function and how you flow as a human being and that's why sometimes the enemy will use little if that will come along the way and tell you little things like this when well, you don't need to go to church every Sunday why, why give so much money? Why do this? Why do you pray all the time? I mean, for what? You've been praying a long time. You're still single. You're still this. You're still. There's always something. The enemy never stops talking. Amen. He never stops. He's. Let me share some light He ain't going to never stop talking. He ain't going to never stop. That's right. Even after you get married, he's still going to have something to say. <laughs> See, you getting lazy. See, you doing this. See, you ain't that. See, see, all of this. Yeah. The, the, the enemy will always keep whispering. Yeah. Don't think just because your situation looks like this, and sooner or later, if God will allow to transform, that it's going to change, and the enemy just going to go on the furlough, and he's going to leave you alone. Yeah. The devil is never going to leave you alone. Amen. Never. <laughs> Even after you get the promotion, he's still going to be talking. See, See, child, who does she think she is? I mean, she came in and now but they already promoted her. They already promoted him. The enemy's never going to stop. And even if you try to be their friend, they still going to have something to say. The Bible said, claiming to be wise. Verse 22, they became fools. You got a lot of people that claim to be wise because they get with the, some type of uh, universal. They get sort of amongst the upper echelon of a Duke University or Yale University or some major university. So they're claiming to be wise because they're acquiring knowledge and based on philosophy. And philosophy ain't nothing but a bunch of lies concocted, compiled together to have some half facts to it. And they try to, uh, uh, try to uh, formulate it and fix it and disseminate it as if it's true, but it's really not true. Because if you weigh it against the word of God, you find out a lot of that stuff that they try to inundate you and teach you is nothing but a bunch of hogwash. You gotta be careful with philosophy. The Bible 
says the wrath of God is what revealed. Revealed me is consistently being revealed. It's being revealed consistently. It's not something that happened at one point in time in history. No, it's consistently being revealed. Who suppressed the truth? Suppress means to hold down, to hold back, to, to keep a grip on. Many people, all they want to do is suppress the truth about anything. About child rearing, rearing, about abortion. We did the whole series on abortion. And some people still were trying to suppress the truth. Somebody did, yesterday was trying to talk to me about abortion. And they started talking against Christianity. And, I, and he was talking and talking. And, and you know, I let him finish. And once he finished, I said, well, I tell you what. If the situation is the fact that they got raped, all they got to do is give them up for abortion. And then God gave me the person on my mind was Steve Jobs, the guy that came up with Apple. I said, look at this guy. I, I use the same example that I used in the message. I said, look at this guy. He was adopted, amen, as a child. Come on, somebody. He didn't complete high school, but at the same time, this man built a multi-billion dollar company that some people got iPhones and iPads and, come on, somebody, and Apple computers, and all this came about because of the fact that God had a divine purpose for Steve Jobs and the earth. And even though he died of a great sickness and his money could not eradicate the sickness, but yet it's still God used a point of time in history to bring about something as a phone, something as a tablet, and something as a computer so you don't know who you birthed. Yeah. You don't know. No. And he had to look at it different. He said, man, I ain't think about that. I said, yeah, Bill Clinton was adopted too. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. So when, when we look at certain areas and certain reels of things, we have to look at it again because you don't never know what's being birthed out. Now, we can talk about birth in the natural, but we can talk about new birth in the spirit. You don't never know what's being birthed out. And sometimes people, all they want to do is suppress what God wants to bring out of you. And that's why they talk so negative. That's why they talk so against the things of God, but they don't talk against the things of the world. Why? Because it appeased the flesh. Just like these people was in Romans chapter 1, that when God said, I gave them over to the lust and the compassions of the heart. Why? Because they suppressed the truth. He said, I gave them up. When people abandon God, he abandoned them. When people willfully, continuously abandon God, God will abandon them. Don't think God won't abandon God. But the, he said here, here's the example, read it. Romans chapter 1, we ain't in the Old Testament, we in the New Testament. He said, and I gave them up. He said, I gave them up. Why? Because what they lust for, what they crave for is in their heart. And some people, until they get a heart transplant, they ain't going to never come to church. Until they get a heart transplant, they ain't going to never read their Bible. They ain't going to never lie to the Word. You can talk to your breath, get stained. But until they hear the voice of the Lord and surrender themselves. Sometimes it's our sons. Sometimes it's our daughters. Sometimes it's our grandma. Sometimes it's our auntie. Sometimes it's our uncle. Sometimes it's our brother. We love them. We care for them. We'll do almost anything. But sometimes we have to let them go. That's one of the hardest things to do, is let go. But don't go broke trying to help people that God is putting a curse on. You better understand the difference. Amen, somebody. Don't deplete your bank account trying to rescue somebody. That if you pay the bill this month, how you going to pay it next month? If you ain't got enough money this month, how you gonna pay it next month? So now you're gonna have to put them on your rental tab or on your mortgage tab, and now you got two mortgages to pay. Come on, the devil is a liar. No, we gotta formulate a plan to get you out of this rut because helping you ain't helping you. But if we find okay to find what's really going on, you really need to put in some applications. You really need to do this. You really need to think about your career again. You really maybe need to consider going back to school and acquiring those skills or learning to trade. Come on, somebody. You gotta do something in the natural, just like you gotta do something. Something in the spiritual. You can't sit around and keep talking about the gas going up, bill going up, property tax going up, rent going up, mortgages going up. I'll be come on. You said everything going up. Now it's time to revamp. Come on, say your financial situation. Maybe the job you are ain't promising. Maybe you gotta change job. Maybe you gotta change career. Maybe you gotta change up. I know sometimes we all get comfortable. Sometimes we get lazy, lacks of days, but at the same time, we gotta know. It sounds easy, and I get it. I'm learning it too. But we have to know when to move. We can't keep looking at all the signs that we need to make some adjustments and, and keep talking about, Lord, just send the rain. Lord, Lord, send the rain. Send this, send this, send this, send this. Do you think about this? Do you want 
God just to do a miracle today for your, your finance? Or you want God to reposition you that your finances will continue to do what it needs to do? Yeah, Come on, somebody. Sometimes we're on the wrong side of prosperity. And Israel was, uh, was facing the dual role of strength and light and was dependent on one thing, adherence to the laws of God. Failure to uphold God's laws, glorious and awesome name and manifest his character on the earth in this way would result in loss both in blessing. The reason why they was experiencing what they was experiencing because of their attitude and their character and their mindset and they was going back worshiping false gods. They was doing other things contrary to the word of God. That's why he told them in the same chapter, if you were not hearken diligent to the hearken, it means heed to listen to. And a lot of times people, even in the church, they don't heed to the word of God. They heed everything else. They believe everything else because it's in their face. It's natural. It's tangible. They can see it. They can touch it. They can taste it. They can experience it. 